Inaccurate nutritional information is really common. A lot of false nutritional information gets published or pushed a lot of times for marketing purposes. Or sometimes people will just post an article about something that is incorrect and it blows up and gets taken way out of proportion. The biggest downside here is that it can be really, really complicated for your average person to navigate through all this stuff and try to figure out what's true and what isn't. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dustin Williams, and for the best nutrition, health, and fitness advice, make sure to subscribe to my channel, hit that little notification bell so that you are notified when I post a new video every week. There are a lot of nutritional myths that I have to debunk regularly with my clients. I've been doing this full time for 13 years and I've owned my own training studio for 10. So I have had to debunk quite a few different nutritional myths. But today I want to talk with you about my top five for 2020, the, the five that I'm seeing the most and that I'm constantly having to uh, kind of combat. The first one that I want to go over is that people believe there are specific foods that will block fat loss or cause weight gain. This is not true. All right, people will say you need to completely avoid sugar because if you have any sugar in your diet, then you're going to gain weight. You should avoid this food. You should avoid that food. You shouldn't eat too much fat. You shouldn't eat too much of this because these specific foods are going to cause these problems. Now, I'm not saying that all foods are created equal and that all calories are the same calories. But what I am saying is that whenever you keep things in the right calorie numbers for you specifically, that these foods are not going to block you from being able to lose weight. So if you just say, for example, if you look at people that eat high carb can still lose weight. People that are doing keto can still lose weight. People that are vegan can still lose weight. People that are carnivore can still lose weight. People that intermittent fast or don't intermittent fast. So if you look at all these things, the big thing between all of them that's causing fat loss is calorie intake and protein are the two biggest factors that are going into this. So to say that there's a specific food out there that you need to avoid, because if you eat this food, whatever that is, insert this specific food that you're hearing about or reading about is what's going to keep you from losing fat. It's just not true. The second biggest nutrition myth that I want to go over today is that you should eat more meals per day in order to increase your metabolism or the exact opposite that tends to be happening now with intermittent fasting. And that's that you should take all of your meals and squeeze it into a short amount of time. And that that's going to create more fat loss or increase your metabolism. Neither one of these are completely true. Ultimately what matters is that over the course of that 24 hour period is the total caloric intake that you are, that you're having. So if you, are focused on eating five or six meals a day because that's what works best for you and you are adhering to your diet and to your caloric intake better that way, great, do that. If it's better for you to squeeze the amount of food in in an eight hour period because you find that you are less likely to overeat if you eat in within that eight hour period, that's also fine, do that. It's really more about adherence than it is about trying to eat five or six meals a day or squeeze everything into a short period. It depends on the individuals. I've done six or seven meals a day. I currently do three meals and one snack now. That tends to work better for me. Doesn't mean that it's gonna work better for everybody. So don't get under the belief that you need to eat multiple meals or that you need to intermittent fast. Do what's going to help you adhere to your diet best and either one of those methods or strategies will work. The third nutrition myth that I want to discuss is that salt is bad for you. This is one of those that I have talked about uh, in prior years being in my top five nutrition myths because it just keeps coming back. I seem to can't get this one to go away. Um, a lot of my clients are just afraid of salt. Salt is very important. It is made up of sodium and chloride. These are two things that our body needs need. We have to have it, right? They play into many different functions in the body. They play many different roles and they are very, very important. We need to make sure that we are getting enough salt in our diet, especially if you are making a conscious effort to choose more whole foods. You're not eating out as much. You're staying away from processed and packaged foods. If you're making those decisions to try to live a overall healthier lifestyle and, and make better choices, you're going to get a lot less sodium and you're potentially going to be needing to add more and more sodium to your diet because of this. There's this big belief that whenever you have too much sodium, that it plays a huge role into blood pressure. Most of the research shows that around one to 2% of people are actually salt sensitive when it comes to hypertension. That's a very small percentage. It's possible that increased salt can raise your blood pressure in the short term for 15 to 20 minutes, but not as much over the long term. The big thing to look at if you are worried about getting too much salt is to look into your potassium levels because the salt to potassium ratio is the biggest factor if you want to get more salt in your diet. Add more salt. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid to salt your food. Make sure that you're getting enough potassium, especially if you are eating a more wholesome, less processed food diet. 
Number four on my list is that you should detox. This has been around for a while. There are still different celebrities, well-known people out there that are promoting, you need this detox tea, or you need to do this, or you need to add lemon to your water and then put syrup and God knows what else that they're adding to their stuff these days for detoxing. We already have an internal system that is designed to detox for us, our liver and our kidneys. Here's the interesting part. In order for our liver and kidneys to work, they need nutrients, they need energy, they need glucose in order for them to function properly. And whenever you don't feed your body anything and you only take in some type of an herbal tea or whatever it is that you're choosing to detox with or just not eat at all, then you are not giving your liver and your kidneys what it needs in order to function properly so that it can detox you. All right, there is no special stuff out there for detoxing. Um, the teas and stuff do not work, right? They may make you feel a little bit better temporarily if they end up flushing out some water weight or something along those lines, but just try to eat a more wholesome diet. Whenever you have had a, a weekend binger and you went off and you had too much to eat and you uh, maybe you're feeling bloated and you have some undigested food, just get back into a good healthy caloric intake some better foods for you, and in a couple of days, you're already gonna feel a lot better. Plus, you're gonna be giving your body more nutrients by eating the right types of foods instead of making it a void of those nutrients by not giving it anything. And my fifth biggest nutrition myth for 2020 is that eating late at night or eating before bed is going to cause fat gain. Also not true. I've actually done a complete video on this topic. I will link below to that in the description if you wanna check it out to uh, look into it a little bit more in depth. But in general, it goes back to total caloric intake is what's going to matter. Not if you get more in the morning, not if you get more at night. It's about total caloric intake and what's going to work best for you. I have some people that intentionally don't eat a few hours before bed because they find that they feel better. Maybe they sleep a little better. I have some clients that are the exact opposite. They find that if they end up going to bed hungry, that their sleep suffers. They fall, it's harder for them to fall asleep. It's harder for them to stay asleep because they keep waking up potentially from adrenaline spikes in the night. So for some people, it's better if they actually eat before they go to bed as far as just increasing their overall sleep quality, giving them more energy for the following day. As long as you are staying within your caloric intake for what you need on a day-to-day -day basis, you can eat every single night before you go to bed, immediately before you go to bed and still lose fat. Ultimately, focus on what's going to work better for you and how you respond. But don't be afraid of eating later at night just simply because you're afraid that it's going to keep you from losing fat because completely inaccurate. Definitely a myth. So I've given you my five biggest nutritional myths of 2020, which hopefully is going to help you out. But here's the thing. When it comes to creating long lasting fat loss, when it comes to creating a lifestyle, there's more to it than just focusing on avoiding some nutritional myths. You need to have a plan and you need to have something that's going to be sustainable. So because of that, I've actually put together a completely free guide that I want to give to you guys. It is my yo-yo dieting cure. I will put the link down below to it in the description. All you need to do is go to that site, download it completely for free, check it out. Hopefully it will help you out. And as always, if you like this video, I would appreciate it if you would smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next video.